Hi, AD Burroughs and Gleb Alexandrov, and the hard surface modeling industry is really booming right now. If you take a look at ArtStation or any other gallery, you'll notice that robots, space shuttles, any kind of hard surface designs, including sci-fi crates, uh, generate lots of excitement. No surprises, it's one of the most popular branches of 3D modeling. And the amount of opportunities out there for hard surface modelers is immense right now. Concept art for sci-fi movies, props for video games, even the real-world robotic design. If you've ever seen the art of Daniel Beistead, Master Zeon, Vitaly Bulgarov, Neil Blevins and any number of amazing hard surface artists, you may know that feeling of awe and excitement. But at the same time frustration, like how did they manage to pull it off? How do they manage to create such realistic detailed stuff. And indeed, it might feel like it's something out of this world, like it's not for you. Here is a bunch of the common modeling problems that you might have experienced yourself. And we want to give a huge shout out to people who shared their modeling concerns with us on Twitter and emails. So triangles and angons are certainly a headache and topology in general is a real head scratcher when you just start learning the hard surface modeling. The pooling operations can be really hard to master. It can be so unpredictable and frustrating, and it mangles the topology from time to time. And then we just throw the baffle modifier on top of it and expect it to just work, and it doesn't. Another showstopper on our list is cutting holes into curved surfaces. That one came up a lot. And putting it another way, how to keep the shading looking correct. It's easy to feel like you're hitting your head against the wall with that one. And again, n-gons and triangles, where can we get away with using them and when and how do we move them around if necessary? Another issue is how to add in those details but only where you need it instead of having loops running off where they're not helping anyone. And the list goes on and on and on if you have ever tried to create a smooth transition from one shape to another while keeping the topology consistent you would admit uh, that it's a real pain in the butt. We've all been here, we know how it feels and for us, it actually took quite a while to accumulate just enough modeling knowledge to say that we are confident about the process. By the way, how long did it take you? Uh, it's easily been over 10 years now. And you? Something along these lines, I think. Actually, that's an awful long time. So basically we thought, what would it look like if we condensed all the knowledge required to get up and running with the hard surface modeling, including this practical and theoretical dimension, and just put together a video course. So ta-da! Hard surface modeling in Blender. Everything you need to know to create robots and other hard surface stuff in Blender. It's like watching a whole Game of Thrones season but about 3D modeling in Blender. It probably won't make you Vitaly Bulgarov, but uh, by the end of this course you will feel way more confident about your modeling skills. You have our guarantee. So what's inside the video course? First of all we have what we're calling side A, the theoretical side. And this is more beginner focused, getting the foundations in place, the essentials. Like what even are all the options available to us when we consider modeling and building up our 3D forms. For example we could go with the standard modeling toolkit like extrude and set loop cards and so on. Or instead we can use curves to get what we need. Or maybe we can use some modifiers which will come back in the moment. And what's this once again? Some of the coolest and fastest ways we can get very typical hard surface designs is with the boolean modifier. And it's crazy how many boolean operations you can stack on top of one another in Blender. And while it isn't a sculpting course by any means, we'll explore some sculpting options. That's where our modeling theory sections will come in handy. This is where we'll go down the rabbit hole of polygonal flow with loops and poles, quads and n-gons, what they are, where we can get away with them, where we'll likely find them to be annoying and how to move them around or eliminate them altogether. One of our major workflows throughout the course will be the sub-D modeling workflow. So in this section we'll be going over the ins and outs of this particular workflow. How to keep the major shapes intact but with control over how sharply they blend into each other. We'll also show many of those same challenges but approached in a non-destructive way. This is also called the boolean workflow or the non-destructive workflow. So by the end of the course you will have plenty of modeling options to get out of any tricky situation. Okay, there are some Blender modifiers that will be heavily relied upon for our hot surface modeling shenanigans. So we'll have chapters dedicated to the bevel modifier and the solidify modifier. We've got the smooth modifier and the shrink wrap modifier and way more. 
To be effective modelers, we need to know what's going on with the shading, so we have that covered for you too. And of course, we wouldn't get far without a clean and deep understanding of the transformation options in Blender. Mechanical objects tend to need to be aligned in a particular way, it's kind of the very essence of the hot surface modeling design. Understanding what's going on in the viewport will of course be extremely helpful. Changing lenses and switching between perspective and orthogonal views. Working with background images, for example, will be especially helpful during blocking out. It should all be a pretty good introduction into Blender to get us ready to tackle the more practical side B. Here we'll actually build a robot, several million triangles worth of it. First though, we begin with the ideas, some background, inspiration and general thinking behind the design of our robo. To help, there are some principles of design to bear in mind that never let us down. Why and where to place detail, the guidelines of the shapes, to make it feel like the different parts belong on the same robot. We'll be modeling this guy in an iterative way, blocking out, then refining, then boolean operations and so on. Starting with a blueprint uh, that you can download from the resources pack, by the way. Once the blueprints are loaded up, we're straight out of the gate with our blockout mesh. So with the blockout stage, this is where the modeling journey really gets underway. Then we'll move on onto the refining phase. Uh, here we'll be making much more of a commitment in the shapes. There we'll also be using pieces from the kit bash to help put the legs and base together. And the kit bash will also come in handy for when we break out the boolean modifier and start adding in many more of those secondary and tertiary design elements. This process can be extremely fun, especially when adding all those little details, nuts and bolts and cables and so on. Finally, here is where it really all comes together and we are basically done. Well, almost anyway. We need to see it under different lighting and shaders to be able to really give it a good close inspection. And during that stage of the process we'll do the last minute tweaks and fixes that spring to mind. And we'll do all of this to create this awesome robot. A pretty large hard surface project where we put all the knowledge from the side A, from the theoretical side A, into practice. And we have a duck. You may ask, what will I need to follow along the course? Well, just Blender, because it's 100% vanilla Blender course, no third-party plugins. Blender right now is in an amazing place. We're going from the current 2.79 to the extra features and eye candy of 2.8. Much of these techniques and principles translate to any version of Blender though, and many ideas even translate between other 3D software packages for that matter. For anyone who will be able to run that meteoric, industry-impacting version of Blender, we will supplement the course with a few bonus 2.8 chapters. Alright, what about difficulty? The first part of the video course, the side A as we call it, is aimed at the beginner users. So it should be very easy to follow, but the side B, on the other hand, requires a pretty solid understanding of the basic modeling tools and principles, user interface and so on. It's aimed at the intermediate users. We'll be designing our robo at a very high speed. If you feel up to the challenge, you can jump into that section right away. But we'd recommend to first watch the first part to warm up. Each section takes about 6 hours to watch, side B is a little bit longer, so that's a lot of modeling content. As usual, all the necessary blend files are included, so feel free to follow along the tutorials if you dare. Probably the best way to learn anything is to learn by practice, so worth a try. Or just take the final dot blend of the robo and do whatever you like with it. Reconstruct it, see what's inside, recombine the parts to create your own robot, do whatever you like with it. For example, just start experimenting with texturing right away. Uh, maybe that's not the best thing to advise in the modeling course, but whatever you like. This time we went further and spiced it up with a kit bash set. About a hundred objects, nuts, bolts, knobs, subtractive shapes, details and space fillers, some crazy machinery parts, uh, hinges, latches and handles, those kind of things that you might expect from the kit bash set. It's licensed under the Creative Commons license, so feel free to use it in your projects, commercial, non-commercial or whatever. And we can't wait to see what you'll create. Okay, so after watching this modeling course, you'll be confident with using the modeling techniques from either end of the spectrum, from the sub-D to the non-sub-D techniques. Fast track your modeling career from a rookie to a hard surface modeling master. Fear no handguns. Haha! Start realizing your hard surface modeling dreams.